Can you believe that these beautiful, colorful pots are made out of concrete? That's right, that material that people use to pave driveways and sometimes make countertops. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make colorful concrete using pigment so you can turn your project into a work of art. We are not painting, we are not staining, we are putting the color directly into our mix. And this video is made with the hobbyist in mind. I will be showing you how to cast small objects such as this. However, the theories mentioned here can be scaled up and applied to a variety of projects, anything from countertops to pavers, fire pits, and even patios. Today we're using Buddy Rhodes pigments. I'm not sponsored with them. I'm not affiliated with them. I just really like the range of colors that they have available. And I also like that they sell them in these smaller quantities. Hi, I'm Cool Hand Robin, and I built a small business making concrete crafts. Concrete is one of my favorite materials for casting. It's a much more affordable alternative to jasmineite. It's UV and weather resistant, and it gives your small crafts a really nice weight. So let's dive in. To start off, we're gonna make one of my best selling colors, green. And today I'm using the Buddy Rhodes Green Oxide Pigment with my homemade concrete mix using white Portland cement. And I'm using a three to one ratio of three parts sand, two parts cement, one part water with 1.2% Buddy Rhodes water reducer 555 liquid. Now, white Portland cement is a specialty product, so it might be a little bit difficult to find it at your local hardware store than gray. So if gray is all you have, you're more than welcome to use that as well. However, if you are looking for smaller quantities, you can always find it on Amazon, and I will link that down below. And to cast these little pots, I'm using silicone molds from Modern Craft Labs. From time to time, I do make my own, but I really like Modern Craft Labs. I'm not affiliated with them. I just really like their style. So what are pigments? Pigments are powders or liquids that are added to your concrete mix to achieve different colors. When it comes to concrete pigments, there are three main types. There are the natural mineral ones, which is, for example, like micas or cobalts. Then there are the oxides. Those are the most popular ones and the easiest to work with. And then we have synthetic pigments. When working with pigments, the one thing you want to take note of is the max loading rate, which for this pigment is 10%, which means 10% of the cement weight. My concrete mix contains 200 grams of white Portland cement, which means that I can use up to 20 grams of pigment without running into any issues. So to ensure even pigment distribution, I always like to dissolve my pigment in my mix water first. So right here I have measured out one part water and I'm going to add that to my pigment powder. And this is also the step when I add the water reducer. And when mixing, you do wanna make sure that all your pigment has been dissolved, especially concentrating on any that might have settled at the bottom. Now that our pigment is fully dissolved, we are ready to add it to our concrete mix. One of the benefits of working with a water reducer is that it improves the workability of concrete, especially for these tiny little projects where it makes it much easier to pour it into the molds. And would you look at that color? Now we only added about half of the max, so we can always add a little bit more and make it more saturated and darker, but I kind of do like this light green sagey color. So one thing that I do like about working with oxide-based pigments is that your workflow is going to be pretty much the same as if you did not use any pigments at all. As far as setting time and workability of your concrete, you don't really have to change that much. So you might be thinking, you know what, I'm not too crazy about that sage green color. Well, I got good news for you because you can mix different pigments together to create a rainbow of shades. For example, we can make olive green by mixing yellow and blue. And first I'm gonna mix them in equal parts so you can see kinda how they mix together. I'm using yellow oxide and ultra blue at 10 grams each. So that puts us at the max load. And this is what the color looks like. It's a very pretty yellow based green, almost kinda like a desert green. Now, if we increase the amount of blue to 75 and decrease yellow to 25, we get a really pretty muted green. And this is the nature of working with oxide-based pigments. They're going to be earthy and a little bit muted. Now, if you want to get these bright, beautiful, saturated, vibrant colors, you're gonna have to go synthetic. Right here I have the Buddy Road Super Green and the first thing you're gonna notice is the max loading rate is four and a half percent. 
The texture of these pigments is also going to be much more different than the natural earth-based pigments. And there's also a little bit of a learning curve. Working with synthetic pigments does come with its own set of challenges. So one of the things that I've learned from working with this pigment is that if you are going to use a loading rate above 1%, you do need to increase your drying time twofold. Another workaround is that you can mix synthetic pigments with oxide pigments and the oxide pigments kind of help to stabilize them. So for example, for this dark greenish gray pot, I used 25% of the max of the green and 75% black oxide and i know that all of this can be a little bit confusing it's 25 percent of four and a half like what does that mean so i did come up with a system if you know a better system let me know in the comments below but basically what i do is first i have my amount of cement let's say it's 100 grams that means that i can put up to 10 grams of the oxide or four and a half grams of the synthetic now, if I combine the 10 and the four and a half, that's 200% of the max, but I can do 50%. So 50% of the oxide would be five grams and 50% of the max load of the synthetic would be 2.25. Then I can combine them together, which equals to 7.25. And then you can also do 75% and 25. So 75% of the 10 grams is going to be seven and a half and 25% of four and a half is going to be one and an eighth. So now that I've covered the basics of working with synthetic and natural pigments, let's talk about their differences. If cost is an issue, the oxide pigments are definitely going to be a lot more affordable. However, keep in mind that you will need to use a lot less of the synthetic pigment to achieve similar color results. Another thing to consider is the availability of colors. For example, purple or violet does not really exist in the natural colors catalog. So for that, you will have to go synthetic. And while yes, you can mix red and blue together to make a variation of violet, it's impossible to reach that vibrant violet color without opting out for the synthetic. One last thing, a lot of times people ask me if they can use something like acrylic paint or fabric dyeing pigments to color their concrete. And while you most certainly can, does not mean that you should because these types of pigments have been specifically formulated to withstand the harsh alkaline environment of concrete. That means that the colors and the things that you make using these pigments are going to be weather and UV resistant. So I highly recommend making the investment and using the right products. And finally, let's talk about my nemesis, efflorescence. From time to time, you will notice your concrete crafts, especially those that are a little bit on the darker side, develop this ashy coating on them that is known as efflorescence. Efflorescence is the result of concrete coming in contact with water. If you're making something like pavers or pottery, something that's going to be exposed to the outdoors and they're not sealed properly, more than likely over time they will develop efflorescence. The good news is it can be easily removed with a mild solution of vinegar and water and a lot of elbow grease. I also like to use a fine sandpaper to sand it down and then to make sure that all my projects are properly sealed using an outdoor rated sealant. So that about covers it. If you wanna learn more about working with concrete, make sure you're subscribed. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, you know where to drop those off. Uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to give this video a like and I'll see you in the next one. Happy crafting.